Should you buy a rooftop tent for your tribe? So today we're going to talk about the Adventure Kings rooftop tent and how it goes on the back of an MR Tron. So let's start by looking at how I've got my rooftop tent set up. So generally speaking, the rooftop tent is supposed to go on the rooftop. However, I don't like the look of a rooftop tent on a rooftop. They're too large, they're too bulky, they act like a parachute. So basically what I decided to do was to manufacture my own tray rack. Now, a lot of companies sell tray racks and they're generally around six or seven hundred dollars. They don't sit flush with your tray. You end up with these big gaping holes down the sides. So basically what I've done is I've got some steel RHS welded together a strong rack and mounted the rooftop tent. So some of you are gonna wonder why did I mount the rooftop tent on the tray rather than the rooftop? Basically I work in the city. I need to be able to access a car park in the city and therefore I have height restrictions. That's not to say that when I buy a set of 32s and a two inch lift that that's not gonna prevent me from being able to get into the car park. Of course that will. But for the sake of a five or $600 rooftop tent, it's not to me worth not being able to drive my car to work. Coming back to why I bought a rooftop tent in the first place, well, I like everyone else used to swag it. $150 Anaconda swag, I found that a lot of about touring, the condensation for me is the issue. I don't mind the heat, I don't mind the dirt, but when it comes to condensation, waking up in a damp sleeping bag, you, and it, it's just, oh, no way, nah. And especially if you're out there for a few days, if you don't dry your sleeping bag properly, you've got that to contend with. You gotta roll up your wet swag and then jump in it that night, not a fan. Uh, a mate of mine, who's got a GU Patrol, bought a rooftop tent. He bought a Darchi one. It was the design that Adventure Kings have copied with this tent that's behind me here. Now, that's, you know, well over a thousand dollars. It's a fantastic rooftop tent. It's one of the original sort of style rooftop tents. Here I am at a rodeo covered in grit and sweat and condensation. Meanwhile, he's up in the Taj Mahal in a double bed. Cool breeze coming through the fly screens. So I made the decision that I'm going to do rooftop tent when I buy a full drive eventually. So I bought a full drive, had to work out how to go and incorporate a rooftop tent build. As I said before, I can't have one on the roof. It's not going to work. But also rooftop tents on dual cab utes look like shit. They look terrible. They, it's just tremendously large. There's nothing on the tray. And then you've got the cab with the tent on top. I'm not a fan of the look. So please watch as I show you how quick and easy it is to set up the rooftop tent. I cannot do this with one hand. There's a very common issue with this uh, with this rooftop tent, and probably many others like it. You find that the mattress actually gets caught and prevents this this male section and this female section from connecting correctly. So the tent itself, while this part is level, this part that says it will have a bit of a bend to it, and is a uncomfortable and b incorrect. So what you want to do is when you fold this down, you want to make sure that this mattress is actually in and doesn't get pinched in between. It just makes for a tidier setup. When that first happened to me, it took me so long to work out what was actually going on. Mental. So this is the little bar that holds this little entryway open. It is essentially just like a canvas material, but it just flip flops around. It's just constantly like rubbing up against this. I've tried pulling this section tight, but it doesn't change anything at all. The sag is still there. When you're camping and you get condensation and water on top of that, it pulls there. I guess you can see there's the sag here. This is what the rooftop tent looks like set up. There's quite a bit of height to it. There's plenty of room. And yet when it's folded up, it takes up such a small amount of space on the ute. It's great. So the tents come with, I don't know what it's called, these wire peg things. This is designed to open up these windows. 
Come on up the hole. Give it a shimmy. All right, so there we go. That's how the flap stays open. And they are actually surprisingly rigid, which is fantastic. So that's how it sits on this side. Obviously, because the cab's here, you can't open the other side, but this side is good. Plenty of access. The only problem is you gotta be careful that when you open the door, you don't whack it into here. Now, a problem for me is I've got a fridge in here. So to get, I open this door quite a lot when this is set up. So I've got to pull it to the side, open the door. Problem I have though is, what do you do with the cover? Like, when I'm at home, there's no issue. I just chuck it on the concrete, but I don't use it at home. When you're out camping, you can't leave the cover in the dirt. I find myself stuck as to what to do with this giant cover. And because it's such a thick vinyl or whatever it's made of, it doesn't fold well either. I often find myself folding it up and just stuffing it in this hole here because it keeps it out of the way. But if I've got a box in there for storage as well, it's not a great thing. Now I said before, one of the reasons I bought this rooftop tent was condensation. I don't like condensation and a lot of you guys don't either. So what is this rooftop tent like for condensation? The problem isn't necessarily gone. The condensation does still occur inside the rooftop tent. However, the condensation is not near you whatsoever. If it builds up on the, the roof or the side, you're not near the roof or the sides. Maybe if you're inside the tent with another person, you're more off to the side and closer to the walls. But if you've got the windows open as well, condensation isn't a problem. I did have an occasion though where I hung a headlamp from the top overnight above me. I kept waking up freezing cold and I couldn't work out why. Then the next morning I worked out my blankets were wet and the condensation had actually run from the roof down the string of the lamp and then dripped from the lamp onto me all night. It was like torture. This tent has these little holes. So let's just say it's a wet night, but you've got the sides closed. These vents are still open permanently. It's basically a mosquito mesh. However, there's a deformity in this one where it's just folded over constantly. They do nothing. There's no airflow through there. And even if they are open, there's not even enough airflow to, to help, really. Yes, you get a little bit of air through there, but it doesn't dry off any condensation or solve the problem at all. Now, there's no window on this side. There's no mosquito mesh window. Let's just say you fold this up and lift it. Basically, there's a door here, or a flap rather, and it's got one zipper on this side and one zipper on the other side. And essentially, if you open those zippers, the tent is open. There's no mosquito net, no mesh, etc. Think of it like a fire exit. You wouldn't use it unless you had to. This ladder comes with two pre-drilled holes. What I had to do essentially was just to work out the rough height and then drill two new holes on either side so that these little screws sit in them nicely. Now it's important that you get the ladder height right because that also acts as something of a support and it can cause it to sit slightly off on a bit of an angle if the ladder's too high. All right, let's take a look inside. Pretty dark in here. We'll need the stuff opened up. It lets in a fair bit of light. So we're currently in the tent. There's plenty of room. I mean, you've got one side here that you can lay, another side there that you can put your bags or whatever, or you and your partner. There's enough room to spread out. If you're camping by yourself and you've got the flaps open, you've got a nice breeze, it is absolutely fantastic. What's the mattress like? The mattress that comes with it is actually extremely comfortable. If you're the type of princess and the pea person who really needs a soft mattress, you could put extra layers in, but what comes with it is actually a very comfortable sleep. Despite all the pros, however, there are a few cons with it. Obviously the flaps where the condensation, you know, they don't do anything. This here also is a pain. Look at this. Now I get that it's got to be able to expand and contract and let air out and that sort of stuff when you're folding it up. Now it has a little flap here to kind of cover that hole. And there's a hole in every corner, as well as two holes midway through. But if you're in like a mosquito area, and let's just say there's an area where you're camping for whatever reason, and maybe there's West Nile virus or um, Ross River or something known to be in that area, that's not gonna stop the mosquitoes from getting in. Now you can give a little squirt of some sort of deep product around the holes each time you go to bed, but then you go to bed smelling like bloody deep, it's a floor. It would be fantastic if there was a way to patch it up. I don't really think there is. You need that expansion and contraction and the flexibility of that joint, but it's something that you've got to deal with. 
It's also got a whole bunch of nifty little pockets in here. Got four of these. You can slide your phone in, slide your keys in. I like to hook my glasses through one of these little loops, and that way, if I wake up in the night, I can see well. So, would I recommend the Adventure Kings rooftop tent? I would if you're on a budget. The prices have gone up a little bit. I'm not sure what they're at right now. Six or seven hundred bucks ish. For the extra money, it might be better to get a Dachi. My experience, I got this for about five hundred and something dollars. Fantastic value for money at the time. Does everything I want it to do. Yeah, filled the purpose. It's not without flaws. That's big, the big holes there. Mosquitoes will come in there. Be aware of that if you're camping in Riverland areas. I would say the number one flaw of this tent though is wind. I've been camping on York Peninsula on cliffs near Munta, really aggressive wind coming in from the sea. And while my mates are hunkered down in their swags, nice and low behind the vehicles, all good, this thing is shuddering. It's like a plane in turbulence. The whole thing, that's all you hear all night, just this noise. So be prepared that if you go camping near the coast, you're probably gonna wake up to some wind. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, let me know if I can improve, or let me know what else you might wanna see. We've actually got some trips coming up. We're looking at doing Gook's Track in April. I was meant to drive to Bribey Island uh, last week, but because of the border restrictions, wasn't able to. But yeah, make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.